Uh, and artificial intelligence, we gotta talk about that because it's a day that ends in Y and artificial intelligence has continued <laughs> its takeover with revenue from generative AI now estimated to reach $1.3 trillion by 2032. That's according to Bloomberg. Let's bring back in Max Kettner, HSBC, chief multi-asset strategist, Plus, we've got Brian Jacobson, who is the Annex Wealth Management Chief Economist and Strategist. Okay, so gentlemen, as we think about what generative AI has meant for companies repositioning, how they've adjusted their own workforce in some cases, and where they've put massive hordes of capital towards seeing that this can be a revenue generator and a profit generator for them in the future, when should that be a reality? When When is kind of the time frame that you even think about, all right, we better see this pay off? Brian, I'll start with you. I would say that people are maybe getting a little too optimistic about how soon you could see the payoffs to it. If you remember back 1987, Robert Solo once said that the computer age was everywhere except for in the productivity statistics, and computers had been around for decades. Right Now, granted, he just had to wait about five to 10 years before it showed up. This is, AI is probably going to play out over a faster time period, so we don't have to wait decades, but it is likely to be playing out over the course of years. I'm just a little concerned some companies are going to jump on the AI hype wave in here and to talk about what their AI strategy is, even if it is probably completely irrelevant, there's a risk of over-investing in it for many companies. And um, Max, when you think about it, and I know you're, you're sort of more macro here as well, but you know, is it gonna trickle into everything? I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, the way our jobs have changed is already dramatic, right? In, in research and in the analysis function, I remember, you know, when I started this, uh, people were talking about, oh, have you seen what Company X is saying? And therefore, I'm making, you know, predictions on the whole economy on this sample size of one. And, you know, anyone who's, who's ever run a regression in Excel on a sample size of one will know the results of that. Um, and, you know, nowadays, I just I have a team of data science and data scientists around me and I ask them, you know, what uh, 10 thousands of companies are doing and then millions of sentences and earnings calls. And you get that and, you, you know, you can really leverage that for your own analysis already. Uh, and that's already leveraging quite, quite good results. Now, I would agree with what Brian is saying. There is perhaps a little bit too much excitement in the near term. And I think perhaps one of the last ones and the latest ones um, around these times that we've seen was perhaps something like China Internet in 2019, where the theme is such, right, the longer term theme is definitely still intact and has been intact since then. But valuations just becoming a little bit ahead of themselves, you know, the stocks perhaps rallying a bit too much, and perhaps also, you know, companies going into that theme where it's not as relevant as we think, and where perhaps that is actually, uh, uh, you know, running the risk of diversifying away from some of those core businesses where they really shouldn't be doing that. So it's really perhaps the, the hype of it in the last couple of weeks and months becoming a little bit too much in terms of the pricing, in terms of the valuations. But the story as such, I think, is, is really something that will be playing out over the next five to 10 years. We're taking a look at some of the big tech companies that have mentioned AI on their call. We should note that Apple didn't do so voluntarily. They got asked about it and then Tim Cook responded. But for the companies that have been vocal about it, one notably is not on that screen. It's NVIDIA, and they have clearly run away with the narrative around AI right now, Brian and Max. And Max, kind of getting back to what you were mentioning a moment ago, even if valuations do seem ahead of themselves right now, putting AI into the mix for some of these companies, I wonder on the other side, if there is a pillar within AI, whether it's the applications, whether it's the, the language learning models, or whether it's the, the chips at the basis of that, where investors could still feel comfortable with the likelihood that they'll see some type of return on a nearer term because of the demand for generative AI products. Yeah, look, well, I, I think on the chip side of things. Max, I'll go to you first look, on that. Sorry, sorry. Look, on the chip side of things, I think uh, the problem with, with the chip cycle, of course, is that it's not just hinging and not just dependent on the AI side of things, but it's also dependent really on the global cycle, right? Let's remember that the chip cycle is a highly, highly cyclical business. Remember, for example, two years ago, we were talking about this massive shortage 
of chips for car manufacturers, for you know the good sector overall. So uh, there, I would be careful with just really declaring that an AI, an AI theme, but really also a bit more of a, a cyclical, a global cyclical uh, uh, theme, really. Whereas you know some of the the natural language processing models, you know those sorts of things, uh, that, those are probably the pure AI plays that if people want to really be exposed purely to the AI theme, that is probably the one um, where it's a bit more attractive. Whereas if you go towards the chip cycle, be aware that it's not just AI, but you're going to be also quite exposed to the clo global cycle, to, to, so to some sort of beta, uh, uh, broader beta themes as well, and not just to the pure AI theme. And Brian? Yeah, Max said it perfectly. I think, yeah, the chip industry, if you think about semiconductors, how do people typically perceive it is that it was almost like a low margin, very cyclical area. How, to what extent, how quickly will this become commoditized? Right. I think that's a key thing for people to think about is not just what do things look like now, what are uh, the executives saying, but what are the competitive dynamics? We're actually much more interested in some of the more like ancillary plays on this about the companies that are going to be able to utilize the technology, not necessarily those who are building the chips that are going to power it. You can even think about, let's say, data centers from a REITs perspective, uh, or if you kind of want to think about energy, how is this all going to be powered? There's all sorts of sort of knock-on effects and possible beneficiaries that I think if you think in terms of like second order, third order, uh, thinking to really uncover what are the future opportunities here. Guys, thanks so much for spending some time with us this morning. Brian Jacobson, Annex Wealth Management Chief Economist and strategist Max Kettner actually is going to stick around for a little bit longer. Brian, thank you. Have a great weekend.